Um, so my training actually improved, if anything, over lockdown because I'm always traveling, I'm always at competition. So um, we always had little small blocks of training in between. So it was like, I might get like two or three weeks a solid block of training. Then I was straight back to a competition. Sometimes I could have competitions like weekend after weekend. So it was, it was actually a good thing at the start where I was able to set my goals training wise for once and actually knuckle down and improve myself. Um, at the start, it was, it was kind of more of a relax because I just come out of um, a few competitions where I did quite well at. So I got gold at the US Open and I got gold at the um, Bulgarian Open. So to come off that bit of a buzz and I was ready to get back in the ring but at the same time, I was like, OK, maybe the break is needed. And at the time, we didn't know that the Olympics was going to be postponed. So it's like, OK, OK, we can relax. And then in a few weeks, then start focusing towards the games. But obviously it got postponed. But my training didn't really take a, a setback. Like I still had my uh, my training partner moved in to my house. And um, so we were able to um, go through lockdown together. We were still able to train fully. Um, also, the Sport Ireland had lent us... Um, strength conditioning equipment so I still have my squat and I still have my power clean so I still had a good block of strength training and taekwondo training that I was able to do with my um, partner that was moving in so I really felt like I started I could see slowly see progress over the over the first few months anyways and then when everything started to get more loose and I was able to come back here and um, like some of the facilities we have here is great like we've got the electronic uh, system you can see on the screen behind us uh, we got loads of new um kicking targets so it was just um really good to get back in the environment where I was able to train with a few people when the lockdown had eased and it was it was just a really good buzz I know we didn't have competitions to look forward to but you know um it was just nice to get back in some sort of sport team environment um, when my when my training partner moved in um it was we didn't assume that was going to be actually so long he was there for over three months <laughs> Um, everyone assumed that we were going to get sick of each other but now he's, it's handy that he's my best friend as well so um, we were able to kind of still have that social aspect to buzz off each other and still train and um, my dad is actually um, in his 70s so it was a little bit daunting at the start like we weren't too uh, we were a bit worried over whether we should have him in contact with different people but um, he was all for it he, he wanted to do what he could to help me train and like, like I said, we didn't know the Olympics were going to be postponed. So my dad really wanted to have him there so that I was not taking any steps back. So I was able to still push myself training-wise. But um, now have, I think after a while, you don't... I was surprised I didn't get sick of him. But um, now he definitely... He motivated me to do stuff so I could get up. And it wasn't just, you know, people that live at home on their own and they have to get up and they've got to train or something. And... Yeah, it's a bit, bit demotivating, you know. Um, but I had someone there to kind of push me along. And if I wasn't really in the mood, they were like, get up, go train, and we have to train together. Or it was a Zoom class and we had to be online or something like that. But, you know, um, when you're with somebody, it, it kind of helps motivate yourself. So Rio didn't happen for us, unfortunately. We had to try and get through the qualification tournament. You had to get gold or silver in Euros, and I got bronze. That was heartbreaking, but at the same time, if I think back, I was, what, 17? I was still in fifth year. You know, it, it was such a massive dream, and it was just ripped ripped away from me, but I, thinking back on it now, it was kind of what I needed to motivate me to qualify automatically by through a ranking system. So I had then four years to smash out competitions, just keep going, keep getting the results, bring home medals, ranking points, and our goal was to get into the top six um, Olympic ranked athletes in my division to automatically qualify so that was the goal and it was just after summer 2019 and we sat down and we said okay it closes at the end of December we're number eight I think we're actually maybe even number nine and we had to set out a set set amount of competitions and we needed certain results at them like I had to go to Euros um, and at least get a silver which was pretty difficult going into it, especially I was ranked four, I think. So I needed to be ranked one in order to get to the final. Um, luckily I did, I got a silver. Um, I would have been better if it was a goal, it would have taken a little bit more stress off, but okay, we made the, we got the silver, we made the criteria for that one. It was on to the next one. I had to fly across um, 
to the Pan Am region and fight in Las Vegas at the President's Cup and stop a certain athlete. The goal was to go over and not for necessarily to me to get gold, but to stop that other athlete getting gold. If he got gold at that, he would have qualified instead of me. So we went in and we looked at the draw and the only way we would have, I would have been able to stop him is for the final. So you can imagine I'm, I make it to the final, so does he. We walk into the ring, it's like, right, Jack, you have to win this to go to the Olympics. And if you don't, then it's all over. We have to go back to the qualification. And I did not want to have to go through what I did for Rio again. Like, if you get a bronze, you don't qualify. So we went there and I fought the athlete that I needed to be and I beat him again. Not luck, hard work, I'm going to call it. Um, so that was it. We had one more thing we had to check off our list. So it was like these three big things. And it was a Grand Prix final in Moscow at the start of December. It was the last competition of the year. We walked out and it was, you need to win your first match. And the person, other person that is in contention needs to lose their first match. So it was, I won my first match and it was like, okay, it's out of my hands. And 10 minutes after my match, I knew that the other athletes one was on. So my, my coach, as brave as he was, actually went and watched it. And there's me outside in Moscow in the freezing of cold snow, pacing up and down outside the stadium, like worrying, shaking. I was trying to play games on my phone just to try and relax me and try to take my mind off it. But like, it's so hard when it's just, it's out of your hands. It was such a stressful time, but um, 20 minutes had gone past and no, I hadn't heard no news. Another five minutes had gone past and I was like, Do you know what? No, I got a phone call off my coach from inside and he was like, we've done it. And it was just an amazing moment, but oh, then it was like a roller coaster. This was, but that night we found after we thought we had qualified, we were told then that there was actually a back door in through a, a Grand Slam system. That if somebody had wins the Grand Slam, and um, which is a, a totally different um, out of the ranking system kind of competition, that if they get a gold or a silver, they'll take my place off me. So you can imagine I'm at this like buzzing moment and it's just the best feeling ever. And then like within 30 seconds of being told this information, my meal just dropped. And it was again out of my hands. I wasn't going to this competition, so I couldn't go and, you know, potentially make that person lose. So I'm sat there. The competition was on um, December 20th. I can just remember because of the time difference, it was on in China. So... It was, it was like I had to wake up to the news. My coach told me, don't put your, put your phone on airplane mode and don't look at the results. I'll knock at your door and we'll either have this amazing moment where we've qualified for 100%, 100% qualified or we're just going to have to sit down, make another plan like we did and get on with the qualification. And he knocked at my door and we, we did it. Like, and just kind of, got very emotional, like after being told, yes, you're in, no, you're not in, yes, you're in, you need to do this to qualify. And then, you know, it was, it was, it was scary, but, you know, we're in now and that's, that's a hundred percent certain. So. First competition back is in, in two weeks. It's in Bosnia. Um, I have been training for the last seven months and I feel like I've progressed more than I ever have. Like I can really see a massive difference in fitness and strength in just all around like aspects of myself. But there, there actually is a competition on this weekend um, in Croatia, but we decided not to go because it was too late notice. I didn't want to have to cut way too fast because I don't want to feel like I'm taking steps backwards. I've, I've built myself up to be this, this strong athlete now that I feel I am. And I didn't want to have to rush getting my weight down and not having like, the results that actually show what I've been training for. So we decided it was better to just take a little bit more time, get ourselves prepared. And in two weeks, well, just over two weeks, um, I'll be fighting in Bosnia at the European Championships. Unfortunately, there's no ranking points, but because um, halfway through the year, the, the sport made a, a very good decision to, to um, cancel all points this year because there's not been competitions. Yeah, now this this competition, it's, it's not a big one because the ranking points aren't there just yet, but... But for me, it's, a, it's, it's massive just to show what I have and what I've been training for and what type of, like, what type of level I'm at.
just for my own sense, like stepping into the ring, you know, you never know what it's going to be like. Am I going to be nervous again? Like, is it going to feel like I was when I was a kid? Because I used to get very nervous in the ring when I was young. But, you know, after competing so much, like I compete, could compete between 15, 20 times a year. Sometimes like it's it's just mad. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. It's it's not the end of the world, but if it goes wrong, but I don't think it will. I'm at such a high level, I feel, and I'm, I'm feeling confident. So we'll go into it and... We're gonna we're gonna smash it hopefully. Yeah. I actually didn't get very upset over the postponement. I thought it was the right decision. Um, I I looked at it, I try to look at everything in sport in a positive way. I don't want to because I don't want my performance taking a step back. If I start thinking of negative things or what ifs, I feel like I get very distracted. And to me, the sport is you come down, you train, you give a hundred percent. Okay, and then you go and compete. Other than that, I try to stay away from all the political side of things. You know, just if, if something needs to be dealt with, my coach will do it. That's, that's kind of part of his job. So I just, I just saw it as a positive. I said, okay, yeah, it would have been amazing to be there already and have experienced it. But I feel like if I was this year, I maybe would have scraped the bronze if at the most, because, you know, I was, I was feeling good, but now that I look back at it, I feel even better now. I have really like taken a massive stretch in my training that I don't see why I can't actually win next year. Like I can bring home a gold medal. And I know if I keep this mind frame, if I keep my training and competitions up that they, the way they were this year, there's no reason why I can't be um, Jack Woolley, the Olympic champion.